Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. And in this short video today, I'm going to explain to you why the concept of complex number is deeply flawed and based on an idea that is complete nonsense. I've done this in several videos before, but it seems that some people have asked me about it again. And so I'll talk about it in this video once and for all, and I'm never going to discuss it again. So let's begin. Now, uh, as most of you know, uh, some like to say that I squared is defined as minus one. But we don't just make up definitions, and you can't just make up definitions as you please. A definition must be well formed and if you want to know how you can check whether your definition is well formed or not you can read my famous article on LinkedIn called what does it mean for a concept to be well defined. Now uh, let me tell you that throughout my school years, um, I could tell instantly which math educator had no clue what he was talking about. When I would ask what uh, was the reason or rationale behind a definition, and if the response was something like, that's the definition, just use it, then I knew instantly that that particular math educator didn't know what he was talking about and had no understanding of the concept. Um, so it's true also <clears throat> with this particular nonsense here. Now, why is this nonsense? Well, there's only one way to arrive at this definition, and that's if you consider I. And of course, what is I defined as? Well, it's defined as this nonsense. Look, the square root of minus one. Now, why can't you have the square root of minus one, or any negative number as for that matter. Well, look, it's very easy to prove that a positive number multiplied by another positive number gives a positive number, right? And it's also very easy to prove that a negative number multiplied by a negative number is equal to a positive number. So as you can see, in both instances here, you'll always have a positive number. And so it doesn't matter, for example, if you take the square root of 16 and you multiply 4 by 4, you'll get 16. And if you multiply negative 4 by negative 4, you'll also get 16, okay? So now what these... Uh, orangutans in mainstream academia will have you believe is that there exists some kind of number, whatever it is, times another kind of number, uh, times itself, I'm sorry, not another kind of number, which will give you a negative, okay? <laughs> a negative something squared. Now, as you can see, it's totally impossible. I mean, what is the sign of this magnitude that it gives you a negative? It's it can't be negative because we can prove that a negative times a negative is positive, and it can't be positive. So what is it? Something, something in between a negative and a positive? All right, so as you can see, the whole idea here behind this nonsense uh, is that they chose to ignore that the root of minus 1 is just nonsense. Okay, It's not a number. It's uh, not possible. And frankly, there's nothing you can do with the root of minus one, right? So, of course, a lot of theory has been built on this nonsense here. But it's theory that mathematics could quite uh, frankly uh, work very well without, okay? So we don't need this, not in Fourier series, not in any electrical engineering application, not in any field of science. We do not need these bogus objects called complex numbers, okay? Now, another thing you have to notice is that uh, 
in, in doing this to arrive at their definition, the mainstream academics simply uh, ignored the fact that all that happens when you take the square of that is that the square operates on the radical. It doesn't operate on what's under the radical, okay? So for example, minus one is the same as minus one to the half, which squared is the same as minus one because all you're doing here is you're multiplying this number by this number to get one, okay? So it doesn't matter what you put in the radical, okay? Anything, you can put anything there. You'll always have object, okay? So, uh, the entire field of complex theory is basically a whole lot of garbage, and mathematics does not require it, and neither does any other field of science, and that's about all you need to know. So, I'm John Gabriel, and this is a new calculus channel. Uh, be sure to download uh, the most important mathematics book ever written. It's free and I'll put a link to it in the details section. I hope you've enjoyed this little presentation and that you'll join me again sometime in the future. Till next time, goodbye.